Even Pharaoh did that. Pharaoh, when they were leaving, he, when Moses came to Pharaoh and he said, Moses was asking Pharaoh, me and my people, we want to go into the desert and we want to worship for three days. You know what Pharaoh told him? Sure, go ahead. But leave your animals behind. Imagine Pharaoh who has these people captive. He has no problem if you go and worship with God, but you have to come back to Egypt. You have to come back to slavery. You have to come back to idol worship. And so what God did was he commanded that Gideon would break down this altar in his father's house. What God is pointing out to, to Gideon is not the Midianites. So we talked about a couple weeks ago, the Midianites were this enemy like city that was coming in and they were attacking Israel and they were taking everything that was theirs. This altar in Gideon's house has nothing to do with the Midianites. You see what God is trying to tell Gideon about? He says, your enemy is not the Midianites. Your enemy is that you have an altar. And this is what's telling, he's trying to tell Gideon, hey, before I can do something great in your life, I'm trying to show you what is the real problem. Is there bondage to the spiritual forces of the land? I want to ask you today, are you in bondage to the spiritual forces of the land, of, of your environment? You're in bondage to the way the world thinks. You're in bondage to some sin in your own life. You are in bondage to something. It's not the Midianites. It's not the enemy. And it's not one time St. Anthony. He was one of the, the demons appeared to St. Anthony. And St. Anthony was telling the demon, like, leave the monks alone. And the demon responded, he replied saying what? I have nothing to do with your monks. I haven't even been tempting them. They're doing it on their own. They have chosen their own paths of sin. Imagine that the devils are telling St. Anthony, by the way, those guys, that have nothing to do with me. We're innocent. Us demons are innocent. It's not the Midianites. It's that you have built an altar within your own life to some other God. To money. To your own image your own reputation, your own pride, some relationship or friendship or something in your life has become an idol in your life. Even, could even be your spouse. You're like, I've been wanting to get rid of her forever. Like, <laughs> thank you, Abuna. Why, why do I say that? Because in your... If, if your own commitment to your spouse or to your friend or to your friendships or to your relationship has taken the place of your commitment to God, you need to reevaluate how you function as a family, how you function in your friendships as a group of friends or as, as youth or as a community. If these things have taken over God, and listen to what happens in this story. Why did Gideon go at night? The passage told us. Why did he go at night? Out of, he was afraid that not the Midianites and the bad guys coming from God knows where. Uh -uh. He was worried about his own family, his own clan, his own tribe, that they were going to kill him. Can you imagine? When sin enters into a person's life, they would even choose the sin when it takes such a stronghold in your heart. It, they would even choose the sin before they would choose family. I don't know how many times I've seen families broken because, or relationships broken because somebody is going through a sinful path. And, and, and maybe the parents or, or the friends kind of say, hey, you got to stop this. And they say, you know what, then I want to have nothing to do with you. And I want to have nothing to do with you in my life. I love whatever it is that I'm worshiping. My relationship, my bad habits, my addictions. I'm not going to stop this. And I would rather lose you than lose my drugs or lose my whatever it is. Or lose my career or lose my, the way that I'm making all this money. Whatever it may be. Could you imagine that people got so evil? And this is what God is telling Gideon. You've got to cleanse the inside of the cup first. 
his home where his father was. They had a cult in his backyard. They had this cultish worship of Baal in his backyard. And he's saying, you're going to go and protect Israel from the Midianites? you got to cleanse within. Is there something that needs to be cleansed within your life? And you're saying, maybe it's an idol. It's hard. And he says... To offer a bull of seven years old and to tear down the altar with that bull. To tear down the altars had to be a strong animal. It was going to be a big animal that was going to come and kind of like ram that altar. And it had to be of the highest quality possible. And what do we learn from that? You cannot make a, you cannot make a small sacrifice to tear down a big altar. It's a big altar. Baal and a idol and all the another god asherah they're there you can't come bring a little goat and offer a little sacrifice says no you got to bring in a big bull you have to make a big sacrifice in order to take down a big stronghold in your life the bible tells us if your eye causes you to sin what pluck it out and not only pluck it out which that would imagine that was not that's not a very pleasant thing right not only pluck out your eye, but cast it far from you. Wow. Can you imagine if your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out. It is better to go into the kingdom with one eye than to have two and to perish. And this is exactly where maybe we can't get rid of these idols in our life. It's got to be a big sacrifice. It's got to be a big bull. It's got to be a high quality sacrifice. I say to the Lord, Lord, I'm coming before you and I'm telling you, Lord, today it's going to be the hardest thing, but I'm going to offer my Isaac. It's Isaac, right? It's my, it's my son. It's something I love. It's something that's hard. It's something that I've become so attached to, but I'm offering it before you and I'm saying, Lord, you are my God. It's not easy words. It's not fluffy. This is the real deal. Let's go on further. You see, what he's doing is he's ordering Gideon to reclaim the paganized land for himself. God is telling Gideon, you've given this land to, to, to idols and to sin in your life. I'm telling you, reclaim it because he told him to rebuild an altar in the same spot. To build an altar for God in this same spot and use the, the, wooden Im, the wooden images as like material for you to build an altar for God. You see, there's something that we learn in the spiritual life and, and, and the Lord talks about it in his gospel. In Luke 11, 24 to 26, it says this, When an unclean spirit goes out of a man... He goes through dry places, seeking rest and finding none. He says, I will return to my house from which I came. And when he comes, he finds it swept and put in order. Then he goes and takes with him seven other spirits more wicked than himself, and they enter and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. What is he saying? He's saying, you have some demon in your life, some sin in your life, and you get rid of it. If you don't put in that same place the presence of God, the demon is going to come knocking on your door another day and say, well, nobody's occupying it anyways. You're not going to use this space. You 